All right, in the last video, we got these windows put in, and one of the things I had said that we were going to do is make sure we can see our footing, and we can't see it still, so that's another thing that would be adjusted through the view range. So I'm going to go back into that view range and take a look at what we have for settings. This is saying that we're going to see 7 feet 6 inches above that slab level, which is fine. Then a cut plane now we've adjusted the 5 foot 6 inches so we're able to see through this uh, the uh, window sills. The bottom however is set to stop right at slab. So it's not we're not seeing anything beyond the slab. I want to be able to see about um, 2 feet below so I'm going to put negative 2 feet and then now we can see our footing because the footing is below the slab. I want the footing to appear as a hidden line so I'm going to select one of the footing right click and choose select all instances visible in view and then I'm going to edit or override the graphics in view by element. Under the projection lines I want to change the pattern to hidden so that it's represented as a hidden line because it's underneath the ground on the outside and it's going to be underneath the slab on the inside. Alright that takes care of the outside edge. We should be seeing a hidden line for the inside edge. So to create the hidden line on the inside edge, one of the things that I do with the foundation view only is I turn off the floor because we really shouldn't be seeing a surface pattern here. Surface patterns can be misread as section views and so I'm going to turn off the floor so that we just don't see it in this view but we will know that it's there so uh, we're going to call it out like it's there so I type VV and I turn off the floor in this view and that way we should be able to see our hidden line on the inside and we are not so let's see why I think I know why the other reason we're not able to see that is there's also a pad in here so we'd also type in VV, go to site, and turn off the pad. Now we can see the inside hidden line for both um, the edges of the footing. <coughs> In the, uh, the next step here, we're going to uh, dimension our foundations, and we'll add the call outs. So that's what you're going to see in just a moment. I'm going to pause and you're going to see. All right, so here's the uh, layout of the uh, windows all tagged and dimensioned, and I've got my uh, slab called out over here. Now, what's missing from this plan is how we're going to go about um, uh, creating a floor framing system. And I believe, I think I'm going to um, create a floor framing system that allows us to put a row of lolly columns here on this side of the stairs. And then I'm going to put a um, row of lolly combs kind of from the center of the stairs all the way over here. That way we're spanning in this direction and going with the stairs in this scenario. And then on this side of the stairs we'll just span this way. Okay, I think that's going to give us the fewest number of lolly combs that we'll need for the project. I want to use nominal lumber for this first scenario and then when we do the customizing we'll do engineered lumber and we'll be able to span probably the full distance with uh, eye joists or something like that. So in order to create those scenarios I'm going to go to annotate and create a detail line that is going to come across here. Now I want that detail line to be represented as a center, center line so I'm going to select it, right click and um, override graphics in view. Actually before I do that I, I do want it to represent as a thin line and then I want to right click and override graphics in view by element and turn it into a center line. Okay, Then I want to create another center line 
right at the edge of the stairs. So I'll just start here and drag it out to here and then go to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change that to a thin line and then change the graphic standards uh, override to a center line. <coughs> I want a lally column to be here and then um, I'm going to just evenly space the lally columns along this edge starting at right at the edge of the stairs which is a natural position for it to be in and then I'll figure out how many more I need to go along here until I uh, uh, to determine the, the size of the beam that we'll need. So let's put in columns. So if we go into architecture, um, structure actually, and go to columns, you're going to get what's considered a lally column. Um, if we look at the dimensions of it, I believe it's four inch diameter steel pipe. <clears throat> and I'm going to place it first and you'll see it show up there. Um, and before I place it anymore I want to find out exactly where it is in 3D space. So I am going to create a new view that will allow me to see a dollhouse of our foundation. So I'm going to duplicate the 3D view, uh, rename it to foundation doll view, and associate that with floor plan top of slab and that should give us the view that we want to see um, almost I want to just make a slight adjustment with that and have that move up so that we're seeing I'm sorry we want that to be right about there there we go so we just want to be just below the uh, first floor framing now that column is right there and if we look at what the column has been associated with it's been associated with bottom of footing and the top level has been set to top of slab so I want to change the base level or the top level rather to top of concrete and the base level to top of slab and once I do that now the column is the correct size for um, for our scenario. So now I can move in in place and I can make the adjustments I want. So I'm going to go back to the top of slab view. I'm going to select it, move it so that the center of the column is right here at the corner of the stairs. Now I want to just take that column and copy it from the center and let's go eight feet and then see what's left over. I can take that next column and copy it from the center eight feet and that's what we have for an arrangement. I don't think I can tell that we're gonna need these three but I'd rather have these centered so I'm gonna pick up these two and move them over it looks like about four feet nope I don't know why I said four feet that doesn't make any sense Let's try two feet and then they're gonna be centered <coughs> excuse me so then I'm going to do the same thing along here. I'm going to create a position for each one of these lolly combs. So I'm going to pick this one up and copy it from the center to this corner because I do need that one there. We're going to leave that as one of our spans. Then we're going to copy it from the center eight feet and then we'll copy that from the center another eight feet and see what we have left over. Um, I may end up moving those around a little bit. We'll see. Um, that has to stay put. But this could maybe be more centered. But then I'm thinking this might work better if we decide to um, enclose this space here as part of storage or something. Then uh, we probably wouldn't want this lolly column smack in the middle of where we might put a door or something like that. So let's leave that there to, for now. <clears throat> so now our maximum span is 8 feet. Everything else is less than that, and we can design our um, our beams based on that information. So um, beams would be I'm going to use just three two by twelve 
um, 3, 2 by 12. We're going to get into this a lot more in this class and um, figure out exactly what they can be and even try the engineered lumber like I said. But for now we know that 3, 2 by 12 will work. And then I now know that uh, my spans, what my spans are, and I can figure out what I could use for span um, going in this direction. Uh, my maximum span is, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself, is um, from here to here, and that's 15 foot 6. It's my maximum span, it looks like. So if I were to design based on that maximum span, well, I used the span calculator that I have available to me online, and I got five, 15 feet 5 inches with spruce pine fir number 2, 2 by 10s at 16 inch on center spacing, which will work because our actual critical span, if you wanted to be more persnickety about it, is from the inside of the wall to the center line, which is 14 10, so the uh, 2 by 10s at 16 inch on center should be perfect. So I'm going to indicate that. 2 by 10s at 16 inches on center. And then I just want to rotate that note like this so it's straight and then add another arrow. And you can straighten out your arrows. They'll show you how uh, when it's straight. Now that's going to be typical because I why not just use the same um, size for all the scenarios. I solved for the worst case scenario so it's going to work for everything else. So I'm going to add to that note let's get zoomed in on it. I'm going to add to that note make sure that's in caps there. Uh, oh, period, see, period. Add to that typical and then we know that we're spanning that distance for all of our floor drawers. So you can add more notes like uh, about solid blocking and things like that. So um, uh, take care of it in one place or you can take care of it in a general note. But now you understand how to add that annotation. Now there's going to be some areas here where we're going to need some double joists. So I am going to go to um, the annotate tab, detail lines again, and I'm going to create where those double joists are going to be. So I know I'm going to have one here and I've got to create another one. So if I go to the detail line and I put in an offset of 1.5 inches, whoops, wrong side. If I draw that in like so, then I've got a second line. And then if I put one in again, I've got a third line representing two, two by. So I want those to show up as thin lines and that's representing where my double joist framing is going to go so it supports uh, the header that's going to go here and here. <coughs> and I've called these out as 3, 2 by 12 so we're going to add another I don't need to, I, I, can, I can just put those in as a center line. Um, so my next detail line I'm going to do is the same kind of double joist configuration here where the header would be Oops. and then I'd select those three lines and also make those thin and I'm just gonna copy those to the other side for this one so you get copy from there to there and these are just being used to represent where the framing's going to go. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, you can make it exact, so I would, uh, but for now we're just kind of drawing in this framing. So I'd put in um, DJ for double joist to indicate that we're using double joist in those areas. So there's double joist there. And let's just copy this down from here to here and reposition the arrows. So then we've got it all covered. Um, and now we've got the uh, floor framing and information showing how we're going to support our first floor. So that foundation plan should have been updated on this view and um, that looks pretty good. So in the next video I think we might be wrapping some things up unless I've forgotten something. But uh, 
we're getting close to this being a completed project.